Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope you are doing good. Here is our revision series for the boards 2025. In this video, we are gonna discuss questions based on the function. So here is one of the sample paper for the current session. Let's check out the questions based on function from this paper. We got it. Here is question number 12 in which we need to find out the output of the following code. We know already how to solve this type of question. First understand the code properly and draw the dry run table for the same. Alright then, let's try to understand the code in short. Here is one list with two elements. One variable is initialized to 4. This is nothing but the definition of the function. Let's keep it. We will directly come to this function call. In the function call, we are passing the list to the user defined function. So L will become X now. Using global keyword, we are accessing variable G inside the function. So the value of G is nothing but 4. In the next statement, we are calculating the length of x. There are two elements. That's why n will be 2. Using for loop, we are iterating n times. The value of i will be 0 and 1. Now, let's do the dry run for these two passes. Alright then, in the pass 1, the value of i will be 0. Using this statement, we are updating the value of x. We are taking x of i. x of i means x of 0. Look at the list. At the 0th index, we have 10. We are adding the value of g to the previous value of x of i. It means what? x of 0 is nothing but 10. We are adding 4 to it. It will become 14. Let's proceed to the next statement. We are incrementing the value of g with 1. It is 4. Now it will become 5. In this way, pass 1 got over. Let's proceed to the pass 2. The value of i will be 1. Now we need to take x of 1. x of 1 is nothing but 5. In that value, we need to add value of g. Value of g become 5 now. So 5 plus 5 will be 10. Again, the value of g will get incremented. It will be 6. This loop will execute for 2 times and we are done with it. Now let's proceed to the next statement. It is print statement. We are printing the value of g. Look at the value of g. It is 6. After that, we have one end parameter with dollar symbol. So, that will also get printed. Alright, let's proceed further. We are iterating over L. In the previous video, we discussed that when we pass mutable data type to user defined function, the changes reflect back to main. In this program, we pass mutable data type to the function that is nothing but list. So, whatever changes will happen in the function will reflect to main. In the function, list got updated. Now the elements of the list are 40 and 10. Using for loop, now we will iterate over the new list. i is taking individual element of the list. So first element will be 14. Using end parameter, we need to print this dollar symbol. The second element is 10 followed by dollar. In this print statement, this separator is not useful because we are printing one element at a time. In this way, we got our final output $6, $14 and $10. Alright then, let's scroll and check out the options. In which option we have this answer? It is in the option C. That's why C is the correct option. Hope you understood this explanation. It's time to scroll and check for more questions. After proceeding further, we got one more question in which we need to find out the syntax logical errors from this code. After finding out, rewrite the code and underline the corrections made. So write the code neatly, make the corrections and underline it. In the previous sample papers, there used to be only syntax error. But now you have to take care of the logical error. So try to understand the code too. We are writing this code to display only those strings from the given list of string that has one repeating character in it. It means what? To understand this code, let's assign some values. This is the first string, hello. The second string we will take, hi. Let's take one more string, welcome. In the first string, L is getting repeated. In the second string, E is getting repeated. So according to the code, we need to display these two strings which has repeating characters. Alright, let's try to understand the code now. Here is user defined function. The first statement looks perfect. Moving ahead to the next statement. Here we are using input function with eval to take input of list of strings. Look at the statement carefully. 
this bracket got closed but the corresponding brackets of eval function did not get closed so this is the first error let's underline the error instead of underlining this bracket we got our first error let's proceed there is a nested for loop look at the outer for loop for i in l using i we are iterating over the individual elements of the list the syntax looks fine here is inner for loop for j in i it means what j will take the individual characters of the string look at this statement we could notice that colon is missing in this way we got the second error all right moving further we are using conditional statement if if j dot count of i is greater than equals to 1 Look at this statement carefully. We need to count the character, and the character we are getting in J. So how this statement actually should be? We are counting the character, so J should come here, and we are applying this count function on the string, an individual string we are getting in I. That's why it should be I dot count J. and if count is greater than equals to 1 we are printing that string so ultimately we will get the string because we are taking the string in i so this is fine this way we got the third error the statement should be i dot count j greater than equals to 1 and if we get the count of any character greater than equals to 1 we will stop the process that's why we are using break statement and here is the function call So in this way we solve this question hope you understood the concept all right for more practice here is one more sample paper in this question paper also question number 12 is based on the functions in this question 2 we need to find out the output of this code if you can solve it yourself pause the video hope you got the correct choice there is no place to explain that question so let's do it here let's try to understand the code in short there are two calls this is call number 1 and this is call number 2 In the first call we are sending 10 to x using global a we are accessing this global variable inside the function so the value of a will be 2 we are checking this value is divisible by 2 or not if it is divisible by 2 we are updating the value of a with the use of dry run table let's check out the values all right in the first call we are passing 10 to x so the value of x will be 10 a will be 2 because 2 is assigned to a 2 is divisible by 2 that's why this condition evaluates to true if it is evaluates to true let's come to true part a multiply equals to x plus 10 this statement is nothing but a into x plus 10 make a note of it addition operator is having higher priority than this augmented assignment operators or arithmetic assignment operators that's why plus will get calculated first That's why x plus 10 will get evaluated first. The value of x is 10. 10 plus 10 will be 20. The value of a is 2. 2 into 20 will become 40. Pass one got over. What we are printing? We are printing the value of this function. It is nothing but 40 followed by end parameter hash will get added to 40. So the first output is 40 hash. Let's check out the values in the second pass. 20 is getting sent that's why the value of x will be 20 using this expression we modified the value of a and a is a global variable that's why value will get updated now a is nothing but 40 40 is divisible by 2 yes this condition got evaluates to true we will come to this true part again this statement will get evaluated the value of x is 20 20 10 10 will be 30 and 40 into 30 will be 1200 in this way we got the value 1200 for this function call followed by the end parameter is at the rate it means after that we will get 1200 and then at the rate symbol we are using end parameter that's why the output will be in the same line so here is the final output 40 hash 1200 at the rate Let's come to question paper the output is in the option A that's why it is the correct choice hope you understood this explanation too let's scroll down and check for more questions all right then in this question we need to find out the syntax and logical error even runtime errors so underline and write the correct code 
Let's analyze the code. Here is the first statement day followed by the function name. In bracket we are passing the parameter. In the first statement itself we got the first error. Colon is missing. Let's proceed to the next statement. Variable s is getting initialized to 0. This statement looks fine. Here is the next statement. We are using for loop. For i in range 1 comma count divided by 1. Look at this operator. This is a division operator. Division operator gives the result in the form of float. But range function cannot take float values. We need to provide only integer values. So instead of division operator, we must use Floor division operator. So that is the second error. Let's proceed. In this statement we are applying some function on some values. But if you remember some can be applied on iterables like list or it can be applied on tuples. But here are the individual values. So that is invalid. It should be list or it can be tuple too. In this way we got the third error. After calculating some we are returning it. And using print statement we are printing. But look at the print statement. When we pass parameter to the function we use parenthesis. These round brackets. So here is the fourth error. We should pass the value like this. In this way we got all four errors. Let's move ahead and check out whether we have some more questions based on functions or not. So we got one more question that is 31st. In this also we need to predict the output of the following code. You know how to solve these type of questions using dry run table. So pause the video and give it a try. If you got correct answer very good. If not also no problem let's practice it together. Alright then here is the dry run table. It's very easy. In this code we are passing one list to the function. So d will be txt. One variable cnt is initialized to 3, total is initialized to 0. Look at the for loop, c is iterating over list. So c will take these individual values. Then look at the individual pass. In the pass 1, the first value of c will be 7. Come inside the loop. Let's work out on these statements. t is equals to d of cnt. Initially cnt is nothing but 3. d of cnt means we are accessing the element which is at the index 3 of this list. Look at the list. The index 3 means we will get the element 40. You can notice it's a string value. That's why using float function we convert it to float and adding c to it. What's the value of c? c is nothing but 7 and the element is nothing but 40. So 40 plus 7. String variable got converted to float. So 40.0 will get added to 7 it will be nothing but 47.0 we got the value of total we are printing it so the first output will be 47.0 in this way we will proceed to the next pass there is one more statement we are decrementing the value of cnt by 1 all right then let's check out the values in the next pass in the pass 2 c will take the next element of this list it is nothing but 5 CNT got incremented by 1 that's why the value of CNT is 2. Now D of CNT means we will take the element which is at the index 2 which is nothing but 30. 30 got converted to float and get added to C. So 30 plus 5 will be 35. That's why the second output will be 35.0. Look at the values in the remaining pass. In the pass 3 the value of C will be 4. CNT is getting decremented by 1 so it will become 1. D of CNT means value which is at the index 1. It is nothing but 50. 50 will get added with C so we will get 54.0. So it is the next output. In the pass 4 C is the next value from the list. It is nothing but 6. CNT got decremented now it will be 0. It means we are taking the 0th element which is 20. 20 will get added with C. Ultimately we got 26.0 that is the next output. In this way we got the output for this code. Hope you understood this explanation. We solved many questions based on the function. Hope you got a little idea what type of questions you will be getting on functions. Here is the sample paper issued by CBSC for the current session. Let's check out the questions from these two. Here is question number 12 based on the function. We need to find out the output of this code. It's very easy. Give it a try. 
one variable c is initialized to 10 let's come to function call directly with the function call we will go to the user defined function using global variable we are accessing c inside the user defined function so value will be 10 it is getting incremented by 2 it will be 12 using print statement we are printing it so 12 followed by hash symbol will get printed now we will come back to the next statement the value of c reinitialized to 15 that we are printing it means 15 will get printed and parameter is percent symbol look at the output this is so simple we are getting this output in the option c let's proceed here is one more question which is of the form assertion and reasoning let's read it carefully assertion said positional arguments in python function must be passed in the exact order in which they are defined in the function signature we know there are three types of passing parameter the first is positional argument second one is keyword argument and the third one is default argument in positional argument the position matters we must follow the order in the exact order we need to pass the parameters it means what a is absolutely true we need not bother the order only in case of keyword argument all right then let's proceed and read the reasoning this is because python function automatically assign default values to positional argument this is absolutely false in case of positional argument default argument will not get initialized that is the case with the default argument in this we will pass some default value to the argument that will get initialized but not in case of positional argument it means what a is true but r is false all right moving further and taking some more questions here it is in this also we need to find out the errors which can be syntax or logical errors so try to understand the logic of this program too what we are trying to achieve with this code we are swapping the first element and last element of the tuple all right let's analyze the code we are calling the function and passing one tuple to it this looks perfectly fine after this the control will go to the user defined function look at the function definition def keyword followed by name of the function in the bracket we are accepting the parameter in this function header colon is missing we got the first error so let's mark it inside the body of the function we are checking the length of the tuple if it is less than 2 we should return back this if statement looks perfectly fine but look at the indentation of this return statement so the indentation of return statement is wrong here is the second error all right let's move further look at this statement carefully using tuple of minus one we are accessing the last element because we are swapping here so first of all we need the last element that we got using second slicing we are taking the remaining elements it means two and three this looks good this is also okay we are writing tuple of 0 it means we are trying to access this element but when we write single element tuple we should not forget comma here comma must come in this way we got the third error we know single element tuple we create by writing element followed by comma if we only write like this python will consider it as a integer not as a tuple now let's come back to the next element in the main program we are printing the swap tuple print swap tuple here we could notice comma is missing because we separate message and the variable name using comma in python so here is the fourth error so after removing all the scribblings hope this is clear to you now first error second error third error and here is the fourth error here are lot of questions based on functions which are in the form of assertion and reasoning even there are lot of output based questions which are taken from previous year sample papers as well as from the board papers so make sure you will go through this video and check out this question for more practice so with that note let's wind up today's video in the next video we will discuss modules that is random module statistic module and math module so until next time stay curious stay healthy i will see you in the next video